Thank you, Mr. President. And thank you on the floor for the good debate. This is an important piece of legislation, and it deserves the hours that we've taken. Uh, first of all, a uh, good senator for 21 mentioned some hours. Uh, I thought it was closer to 13, but maybe it was 15, that we took public testimony. And based on that public testimony, as a result of that public testimony, there were some changes made. Will the changes satisfy everyone? Of course not. One of the best things that's included in this bill is it guarantees every teacher an evaluation. Right now, uh, a beginning teacher does not have an evaluation. It does not, it's not required that they have a, an evaluation. And doggone it, if somebody is going to try to improve in their lot, what better tool than an evaluation? How do you know what professional development you need unless somebody evaluates you? How do you get better? We don't have a continuing contract in, in, in the new bill for new teachers. We have a two-year rolling contract. And you know, after the, the first year of a two-year, well, uh, for teachers in their third year, I should say, after the first year of a two-year rolling contract, if I didn't get an automatic extension of, of, of a, a year, I think I'd be going to my administrator and saying, am I doing something wrong? Where can I improve? You have what essentially is a whole year of probation to try to improve if you don't get that second year. <clears throat> I have my mother's contract, her first contract, dated 1934. It's on my wall and written across the contract in ink, initialed by the Superintendent or the, the uh, president of the school board and her says, <clears throat> if this person marries during the term this school year, the contract is null and void. You know what? The federal government's taking care of that. People have protections. To suggest that these protections are flying out the window if this bill is passed may be stretching just a little bit. There's concern about parental involvement, that somehow if they have input in the, uh, uh, in the evaluation process, that it's going to be tainted or some kind of a popularity contrast test. Right now, Potlatch, Nez Perce, Hansen, Filer, and Plummer Worley all use parental uh, uh, surveys and involvement in the evaluation process. And we haven't heard teachers complain from those districts, or at least I have not, that that process is not fair. Now, the good senator from 17 talked about uh, delay, deny, and reject. I'd suggest the same tactics can be used with the Evergreen Clause. If you don't want to change, you still negotiate, but you delay, you deny, delay deny, and reject, and that contract goes on. Um, I'd like to speak to the, uh, the word tenure, because it's been a, uh, alluded to a couple of times that now there's tenure in this piece of statute. Um, <clears throat> and I have this from an attorney who suggested that it's a term of art. It's proper use of the... F oh, Mr. Uh, Mr. President, may I read? Having identified the source, some attorney, you may continue. This is the proper use of the phrase vesting, in quotes, vesting of tenure. As such, is indicating the broader in intentions of the legislature and that the intent is not simply a specific limitation on issuing renewable contracts. Thus, in context, the statement is accurate. We don't have any measure of, of what's going to happen with, uh, with early retirement. There have been guesses on both sides. Currently, we spend about $4 million a year on that program. But we can measure what happened when administrators were taking off the early retirement program. And it did not cost the state any more money. There are no provisions, or there's, there, there's no, uh, um, let me back up. 
To suggest that, uh, uh, that, that school board members are, are going to be uh, not able to do accurate evaluations of, of, of teachers, I think, may be a little bit off, too, because uh, school boards hire superintendents to, to do the evaluations, and then they base decisions on recommendations of the superintendent. That also takes some of the, uh, the fear out of uh, uh, the suggestion that if, if the trustees, the, the chairman of the trustees' uh, uh, son isn't uh, the star quarterback, that, uh, that somebody's head's going to roll. And I don't know how you measure costs, court costs. We know right now that local school districts are spending lots of money uh, in, in, in the termination process that we have in place. Uh, the good senator from, from one uh, 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 talked about uh, what it might cost to defend a lawsuit that resulted from this action today. And there may well be a lawsuit filed. But we're already experiencing costs of courts, and I think that's a part of the process. That's a good part of the process. The 99% rule double funds districts for schools. You have little Johnny in, in school A who moves to school B. He's still funded in A, and he's funded as a new student in B. That's $6 million that we're spending. Uh, what we've got before us would save $5.4 million of that. Mr. President, I'd, I'd like to, uh, to read again, if I may. These are excerpts of speeches from President Obama. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Fellow Senators, first in his State of the Union address, April 25, 2011, we want to reward good teachers and stop making excuses for bad ones. And then in his weekly address, March 13, 2010, we're engaged in a historic effort to redeem and improve our public schools, to raise the expectations of our students and for ourselves, to recognize and reward excellence, to improve performance in troubled schools, to give our children and our country the best chance to succeed in a changing world. Mr. President, this is a first step in providing some additional control for local school districts to administer and to accept the responsibility that our electorate provides uh, when they send them to office. Debate is closed.